Ugh, another morning. Well, what do I have to do today? Ugh, I have such a long to-do list. I better do my quiet time now or else I'll never get it done and I need to do it or else I'm not a true follower of Jesus. Ugh. Hey guys, Ashley here and Taylor, and we're here with Coffee and Battle Time. So today's lie that we are going to be addressing and fighting is the lie of having to perform to be loved and accepted. So it's the lie about works-based instead of grace-based. Mm. And believing in Jesus is all about grace. And so our main scripture that we're going to be digging into today is the scripture of the prodigal son. So let's open up our Bibles to Luke 15, 11 through 32. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine that the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of the country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked for him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed a fat calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in, so the father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered all your property with prostitutes, come home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. You read that really fast. Oh, that was really good. Pretty much what the story is about is a father who has two sons. One of them takes the money that his dad gave him and runs away and lives wildly, parties, spends his money, uses it in selfish ways, and when he comes to his senses, he realizes he made a mistake, and he wants to go back to his father, to be loved by his father again. But he believes the lie that he is no longer worthy to go back to his father. The father loves him because he is his son, not for what he has done or hasn't done. He even says, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he wants to come back and work for his dad because he sees all the mistakes he's made. So he wants to work to get his father's love back. But the thing is, is that the father loves him, not for what he has or hasn't done, but because he is his son. The second son is the opposite, yet still they both struggle with the same thing. The second son worked his whole life in order to try to please his father. And he thought that his works would get him the blessings from his father, but he doesn't realize that it's not about the works, it's not about 
always obeying, always working, working, working. But we see the father says, my son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. Not because of what you do, but because you are with me. Like you've been with me the whole time. You missed out. You were working this whole time and you're missing the bigger picture that you were always with me. And that's what matters. So both of these sons were believing the lie that you have to work in order to be loved and accepted. So this story is a metaphor. God loves us because we are children of him. We are our identity, who we are. We are children of God. Let's look at John 1.12. John 1.12 says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. This verse shows us if we just receive God with open hands and accept him, and if we believe in him and we believe in Jesus, we're children of God. It doesn't say you have to do this, this, this in order to become a child of God. It doesn't give you a long list of things you have to do, get baptized, this, that, this. No. You just have to accept Him. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. That's all you have to do. Yeah, and this passage um, just reminds me of two songs that I wrote down that I wanted to share with you guys. One of them being I Am Who You Say I Am by Hillsong which talks about your identity being exactly what God says you are, which is children of God. Mm -hmm. And then another song, I think it's called Like a Flood, I could be wrong, but talks about receiving God's love and just how, how like it says in John 1 12, those who receive God's love become children of God and God's love is like a flood. He loves us so much, not based on what we do to receive his love, but the fact that we are children of God. Now, once we become a Christian, God does say that we need to live for Him, take up our cross daily, obey Him and follow Him, but that's not how we become saved. Mm -mm. And that is not based on God's love for us. He loves us unconditionally, not because of what we do or don't do, but because we are His children and we've accepted Him. Mm -hmm. When we do become a Christian, that's when we'll want to start working for Him and building his kingdom every day. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna throw out here three verses that will help you combat this lie. Now the first one is Ephesians 1, 4 through 5, and it says, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. What is this saying? It is saying that for he chose us before the creation of the world. We didn't do anything then. He chose us because he chose us. He didn't choose us because of what I did or didn't do. Um, the next verse is Psalm 139, 14. And it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. We really want to emphasize the fact that God knit us in our mother's womb and he chose us before we could do anything. And it says that God's works are wonderful. God is the one that is wonderful. Not our works, not anything that we could have done. The next verse is 1 John 4.10 and it says, This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. God loved us before we could love him. So those are three verses right there that prove that it's you don't not need to work to receive God's love. He loves us because of who we are and who are we? We are a reflection of him. We are children of God. Amen. So the root of the lie is that we have a mindset based on works rather than grace. And the verse that we want to show you is Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Again, not by works that we are saved, 
But once we become saved, we will want to do good works for God. And some of you might be wondering, what does grace mean? Grace is when God gives us something that we do not deserve. So an example of that would be Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. We didn't deserve it, but he gave it to us anyways. Grace. Mm. So we don't deserve it. We couldn't earn it. Still, you give your love away. away. Wait, give yourself away. Whatever. <laughs> Reckless love of God. Corey has very third song. Third song. This video. Yes. So some examples of that you can reflect. I want to ask you guys to reflect on this to see if you're believing this lie. Have you been over striving, striving and working in your life in these areas? School. Mm -hmm. Even your devotions, do you feel like you have to work in your devotion time in order to receive God's love? Like you have to do your devotions, check it off the to-do list. Right. Another one would be like with your family, like you have to do everything perfectly or, or God won't love you anymore if you mess up. Yeah. You can even do it with sports, music, art. Any of the gifts that God has given you. For me, I found like I was striving in my job, so like I had to work perfectly for God and get all these things done on my to-do list in order to be up to this standard, which no, God loves me if I do no work or if I do a million kajabillion things. What does he want me to do? Work my hardest for him mm -hmm. and for his glory. Mm -hmm. And to also take some rest. So if you guys feel like striving and this lie of needing to work to be accepted is particular to you, remember to fight these lies. Mm -hmm. We reminded you last week that throughout the week you need to be fighting the lies every single day. It takes 21 days to renew your mind. Yes, saturate your heart and your mind with scripture. Definitely get this journal if you haven't, guys. It will help you fight the lies you believe. And if you find yourself believing the lie that you have to work, I would highly recommend getting this journal. Mm -hmm. So we're going to leave you with some questions here at the end of the video that you can reflect on, that you can journal about, or that you can discuss in a small group setting, whatever you like. And we really hope you guys continue on fighting the lie this summer that you're believing. Once again, ladies, all you have to do is come to him. And we're going to leave you with this verse, Matthew 11, 28 through 30. You can look it up on your own time, but we highly recommend if you're struggling with this, look at that verse. All you have to do is run to God. That's another. I run. So I run. Not a verse. So I run to you. Urban Rescue, run. Fourth yeah. song of this video. Guys, this is a good song. There's a lot of songs in this video. You should look them all up. Yes. All right. That is all we have today for Coffee and Battle Time.